Now, control orders are the orphans of our legal system's attempts to crack down on terrorism. They were introduced as a temporary measure in 2005 to deal with people the authorities believe could not be charged, tried or convicted of any offence. No one much likes them, but some see no alternative. Now the issue risks splitting the coalition government, with an internal review thought likely to recommend they should stay, in line with the views of the Home Secretary and the head of MI5. But that will not please the Liberal Democrats and some Conservative MPs. Our political editor, Michael Crick, reports. Control orders were brought in by Labour five years ago, amid charges that they're a huge erosion of civil liberties. The orders severely limit what a terrorist suspect can do, restricting where he can go, for instance, or to whom he can speak. They've been used pretty sparingly, though. Only nine are in force right now, and some members of the cabinet think they should be scrapped. There is no doubt that you don't have a trial in the case of, uh, of control orders, so it's, it's absolutely clear that people are put under house arrest without actually being able to answer charges put to them. And what I've always said, and I think a lot of the people would prefer it, is that if we are going to uh, deal with terrorists, let's prosecute them. The Liberal Democrat manifesto pledged to scrap control orders. The coalition agreement merely said the government would urgently review control orders. That review is being overseen by the former Director of Public Prosecutions and Lib Dem peer, Lord Ken MacDonald, who's said to be strongly against any attempt to keep control orders. That might explain why David Cameron reportedly warned colleagues recently that we are heading for an effing car crash. For Lib Dem backbenchers such as Tim Farron, it would be a coalition concession too far. I'm sure that many Liberal Democrat MPs, and indeed Conservatives as well, would not tolerate uh, the retention of control orders. Uh, and it's important to have this debate now, so the Home Secretary and others on all sides of the coalition understand that that is the, the state of play. And as we look at the terrorism review, I mean, it's important we stand, stand back and allow it to run its course. Uh, but it's important that it is known that there are certain red lines, and uh, I would say that control orders are beyond the red line. The Home Secretary seems to have come to the view that control orders should stay, though it looks like ministers won't make or announce their decision until December. There's still some work going on in relation to the review. It covered a number of areas of, areas of counter-terrorism legislation, as you know. Uh, so some further work is being done and no decisions have been taken. What I'm clear about is that we do need to take some steps to rebalance national security and civil liberties. But, of course, commensurate always with ensuring that we can keep this country safe. Two years ago, the Tory MP David Davis quit as Shadow Home Secretary and fought and won a by-election in protest at Labour's anti-terror laws, backed officially by David Cameron. But now he's preparing to fight the same cause against the Cameron government, talking of two dozen possible rebels amongst fellow Tory MPs. They could include Patrick Mercer. There are cleverer ways of dealing with this than the way that the last government dealt with it. Um, you can, for instance, if you, have, if, if you prefer, have a control order light I mean, that's not a very good description, but you can put measures upon people who are, who are under suspicion before they come into court, which are less intrusive, less oppressive, and probably actually rather more effective. But others say the reasons for introducing control orders five years ago are just as relevant today. When you are in opposition, it's a lot easier to criticise things like control orders as being authoritarian, anti-liberal, that kind of thing. Whereas once you're in power and you see the security briefings every day, you're made aware of the nature of the terrorist threat, then of course I think you have a very different outlook on it. But I would also say that the information was available for the, con for the Conservatives. The open sourced evidence against a lot of those under control order is also extremely damning. This isn't just a, a secret intelligence matter. There is also a lot of open court evidence which suggests how serious the threat some of these under control order are. It's not just Liberal Democrat ministers who don't like control orders, but some leading Conservatives too, including the formidable figure of the Justice Secretary, Ken Clark. I understand that when Mr Clark recently met members of the security services, he told them he was pretty unimpressed with their arguments for carrying on with control orders, reminding them 
that as a former Home Secretary, he ought to know what he's talking about. This argument will probably go all the way to Cabinet, and in the end, the decision may have to be taken by David Cameron himself, a potential risk to the Coalition. But remember, Labour's divided on this too. Several Shadow Cabinet ministers told me today Labour should stand by what it did in office. Others say the mood's changed. It's time for their own U-turn and a chance to beat the Coalition.